Alrighty, a Lidl with you, and Wednesday night, if you can't be there in front of your TV, you must TiVo it. Do we even have TiVo anymore? DVR it, record it. Chocolate news is nothing short of hysterical. David Allen Greer is the star of it and plays every role in it. David Allen Greer, it is a pleasure to meet you. Thank you. It's nice to be here. Oh, don't play. You're, you're so... <laughs> you're so uh, uh, tired. I'm I, tired. Well, I can understand that. Yeah. Let me tell you something. You're, uh, I want to get this out of the way. They explain this. David is appearing at Comics Comedy Club here in Manhattan tonight. Two shows, 8 and 10.30. And tomorrow night, two shows, 8 p.m. and 10.30. Where is Comics Comedy Club? It's downtown. It's in the Meatpacking District. It's... Uh, that's as close as I can tell Oh, that's on 14th Street. <laughs> yes, beautiful. yes, yes, absolutely. Our, my good New friend club, Richard Belzer club. plays there all the time. Yeah. Chocolate News... Is great. Thank you. For somebody from another planet who was just awakened from a coma, David Allen Greer, what is Chocolate News? Well, basically, it's a sketch show, but it's a higher concept sketch show. It's kind of like I'm poking fun at all of those shows uh, we've grown up watching that are unabashedly ethnic. You know, <laughs> so if it were for a Hispanic audience, it would be Nosotros. <laughs> right. You know, they have to have a name that yeah. evokes, you know, positively black or, you know, uh, so the Chocolate News, Katama Smiley, any any of those shows we've seen. Uh, I know Gil Noble used to have a show here in New York that was on yes. yet yeah, like at three a.m. You know, well, who was it? Who uh, on SNL they did? Uh, this is Lionel with yes. black perspectives, black right, right. and they never black. got to they yes. never got to anything. It was like this. Okay, we'll give you the show three in the morning. Talk about something. Well, it was federally mandated. You know, it was supposed to be. You know that uh, public television had to do this, what they called uh, community television. And SCTV so did the Great White North pursuant to a Canadian rule. And they yes. said, oh, you want Canadian? Well, we're going to give it to you, and that's that. <laughs> Who is, I don't know what you call it, but the mm. your persona, whoever yeah. this, <laughs> not angry, but defiant, PO'd, yeah. No nonsense cracks me up. <laughs> who, who is that? He's a he's a, a several people. I mean, I the, the way I describe him, he's, he's kind of like I started at <laughs> Stephen A. Smith, who's this African American sports uh, broadcaster who I love, but he is the same way. But it's just about sports, you know. He was he he like he would say the Knicks will never <laughs> win a championship. I don't care if you get Kobe Bryant; they will not do it. I I I you know he's that guy. Right. So it's that that's a part of it, and also it's like the McLaughlin Group. You yes. know, when you have the old McLaughlin Group, right. we started doing a roundtable on the show. Right. You know, Eleanor Holmes Norton. What do you say? <laughs> You're wrong. Jack Absol Javond! Yeah. I call on you, sir. Absolutely wrong. <laughs> I disagree. So that guy, hard-headed, and he thinks he knows everything. So the black Bill O'Reilly. And well, yes, well, I, I guess, but but what it is is it's and I don't want to get into the you know this argument. Now, I couldn't say that. Well, why of would, course not. Why, why it wouldn't be funny? No, I mean, I mean but why, if, if I said the, the bit you did on Beyonce's skin, yes, uh, <laughs> was. Great. Now, but some of it is like, it's not like, you know, it's like when we used to do In Living Color. It's not that you can't say it, but there's certain things that black people are more obsessed with, you know, and that's one of those things. And because if you noticed, like, we talked about it in the writer's room, like, if a black celebrity does bad, then you get darker. But if you get more successful, right. you get lighter. Because, like, we were the talking about O.J. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. He was blue-black. He was right. really dark. They were like, O.J. Simpson, <laughs> where is he? You know, he's on the run. He was all dark, you know. And uh, we've seen that before, that, like, it's weird. And now by computer, they can make you anything. Now, do yes. you have this – is, this is, for some reason, the perennial question, David Allen Greer. Mm -hmm. uh, and I love, by the way, you could be a mass murderer. You know that, too, mm -hmm. or a serial killer. But – People say, why is it that people don't find anything to kid Barack Obama about? Is it because he's, I, or how about he's not goofy? He doesn't no. misspell words. Not yet, I mean, not yet. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, that's the one question I get from every journalist. How do you make fun of Barack Obama? And it's like, we will, first of all, I think wait till, wait exactly. Till he earns it. His, you know, his cabinet, his presidency will take shape. And we'll find humor in that. He's a human being. He'll mm -hmm. do something. And usually the country latches on to innocuous behavior. Like if he stumbles down some stairs, right. 
uh, mispronounces a word or something or vomits in a Chinese official's lap, then we will be have some knee slappers. But so far, he is tight. He is he is hard to get a beat on. You know, he's not the easy, not dyslexic hate, like, like President that, Bush or that David Allen Greer. The same, it's like, well, you you know, you want it both ways, don't you? Right. Yeah, you know. Oh, you think it's funny when George Bush? No, I think that if he were to to me, his his um, his visage, if you will, is, is stiff, mm -hmm. uh, not very. Un wow. That's that's about it. Uh, yeah, for but now. That's not, but that's not a knee slapper. No, I mean the one the one thing that we did on on the show is you know. As soon as he was elected, uh, they started showing pictures of him in a tracksuit. And so my, yeah. but again, as an African American, my knee jerk reaction is, dude, what are you doing, man? <laughs> you didn't give it the office yet. Put the suit back on. <laughs> what are you doing? You know, don't wear, what's next? Flip flops? You know, it's like, please, well, wait till you get, it's like, wait till you get in the White House. We voted for the suit guy, you know? Um, but Do you that's know who about... I loved and missed so much? And I, oh. and I was one of the few people who agreed with him, Reverend Wright. I thought Reverend Wright, who, who would do that, but always read. Remember, well, you know what? He, I will say this. Because what he said this. was not that far-fetched. No. Just don't scream it. If, if exactly. Mr. Rogers had said, God damn, America, I don't think people would have. It's the... It's the everything uh, he said was... Uh, not everything, but a lot of things were true. Not that's what I that, said. Uh, well, I was having dinner with a friend, African-American dude I grew up with. He said, we were talking about Reverend Wright, and he said, to black people, that's like... Everybody's black minister said something close to that at some point in church. It was no different than my Jewish friend who said her rabbi would say, do not assimilate. Do not mm -hmm. assimilate. That is your duty. Now, it's not right now. That mean, you know, if you're running for president and Jewish, maybe that's not too PC, but that's what they said.